हेलो फ्रेंड्स माय नेम इज हसी बंसारी फ्रॉम हाई वेलकम बैक एंड थैंक यू फॉर जॉइनिंग मी इन दिस वीडियो टुडे टुडे इज वीडियो वी विल बी सीइंग मोर अबाउट द ऑथराइजेशन ऑफ आवर एप्लीकेशन दैट वी लेफ्ट आउट इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो एंड वी विल एक्सटेंड to complete our application uh, the spring boot application and uh, while still we go into the next part let's have a short recap of what we did in the last video so in the last video we have this application or we had this application and we wanted to integrate this application to enable sso login via the clients that we had created in one of the previous videos so this application or this client and uh, we configured some of the configuration in this form we created a role to access one of the page of that application we created a user uh, in the key clock so that when we go into that application we can make a login and out of this urls so if i go here i will see nothing out of this urls we only take care of the login url so when we go into the login page we see a uh, login tab we see a login page and we make a login with that user we will be logged into the private section of the application and then we can see the different urls and the fact that we don't see it when it is logged out is because this url is still not protected and this is exactly what we will do in today's video so without wasting any further time let's get started so what more we will we will be doing in this video we will be protecting each and every urls of this tabs individually and then we will give some more authorization roles to go on each tab and depending on our actors that we discussed in the previous video we will give that role accordingly so for example a principal will have all the roles to go into all the sections a teacher will have more roles than the students and uh, our clerk or a librarian will have only role to access the welcome page that we see just after login as well as the section that they are for for example a clerk is to go onto the office page and a librarian to go to the library page so let's see from the coding section so what we will be doing more will be just to extend more of the urls like this and first we will go to our controller to check how we will be framing our endpoints so if i see the controller it is still private user and the place which is nothing but the name of the templates that we see over here in this folder so it will be quite straightforward so i will just copy this two line and i will paste it and i will instead of the welcome i will say classrooms which is also the name of my template file so this classrooms and instead of welcome access let's give it a new role name and i will say classrooms access and we still this see uh, the red line because this is an array and we have a totally new const, uh, constraints security constraints so this is zeroth element now we are changing it to the first element so we will just change it and then we will see no errors and similarly we will be doing like copying this two line and uh, configuring it for all the templates or for all the views that we have so instead of doing it live in the video i will just quickly do it and come back so i will pause the video now and i will come back once it is done so once we have all the configuration in place it will look something like this we have a welcome page like a common page for everyone with this role we have uh, classrooms with uh, this role then we have a staff rooms i forgot to give it a role so i will just quickly also give it a role and the staff room is the second element so i will change it to second and then it is okay but uh the name itself is not correct the role name 
so it is staff rooms access uh, then the office will have the office access role and so on and principal rooms will have a principal access in this way we are uh, doing all the configuration needed on the Spring Boot application side and now when I try to rerun my application so everything rest of the part is still the same like what we did in the previous video so only part we are just doing about more on uh, protecting the each URLs and authorizing it with a different role name so the application has been started I will quickly jump on the browser so once I see and come back to this application I will refresh the page and uh, now when I try to click uh, other URLs I will now see the login page instead of the error page and this will happen for all the URLs that I protected now just in that configuration so still we have only one user and that user was having the access to the welcome page so once I try to go to the staff rooms and when I try to log in I will see forbidden because the staff room page should have the role staff rooms access so that was all from the Spring Boot application side now we will go to the key clock admin console and uh, either I can create in this application in this client configuration of course I have to create new roles over here because for the Spring Boot app we have a lot of uh, roles and for each role I need to create or add role over here in the client configuration so I will quickly create all the role like this and I have to do it for all the roles that I just added in my Spring Boot app and it should be as it is and uh, care should be taken not to have a typo over here because if we have a typo then it will not function like how we want so library access which are a sport access and then the last one will be principal access and then I will come back to the point what I was saying that either we can create new user for new roles or we can give to this admin user all the roles and try but I would prefer to have different users with different roles and see how the application functions with different users or different actors and that would be the perfect example but because this is like the admin user which should have access to all the areas of the application I will quickly come to the role mappings and we also did it for the last user I mean the admin user itself in the last video and uh, what I say is uh, the principal the principal access should have the maximum or whoever having the principal access should also be uh, permitted to go inside each of this <coughs> URLs so when I try to give principal access I'll make sure that all other roles is also assigned to that user so for the admin I will just give all the selected roles to him and then I will quickly go to the browser to my application and I'll just make sure I'll refresh and let's try again with the staff room application with the same user so I will see the login screen and when I go to the same user so last time I was seeing this forbidden page but this time I will get inside the page the protected area and then I will see also my roles for this user over here and because I have the highest role in at the, at the moment I can scroll through all the tabs of our application hi-fi code school so let's quickly log out and try with some more users so like giving less roles and uh, performing some more surfing through the tabs that we have so let's create a user uh, let's say a, st a student user so again I'll go back here to the create user and I'll say student 
with the email student at the rate hi fi code sorry at the rate hi fi code.com I'll just give him the name as student and hi fi code so I missed something over here okay and save and here I will make sure that I have this credential set and it should be a permanent one and not a temporary one so set password set and then because this is a student then we need to take care like which role this user or the student user should have so a student should have access to the classrooms at all times so I will give it he should have access to the library he shouldn't have access to the office so I will not I will not give him the principal access room he can have the access to the sports and the welcome page is common for all so I will just give it to every user and now we have restrained these three roles to give it to our user student so when we try to go to these three areas he will not have access otherwise he will access he will have access to all the other areas so I will quickly jump back to our application I'll refresh and I'll try to go to the classroom again I see a login page I will now try to log in with a student user with a student password and I see the page that means uh, we are through with the login and the authorization and then we see the roles over here of the student of the student user now when I try to go to the sports area I still see it in the library I still see it and of course we will see we will see the home page but when I try to go to the staff room I will see a forbidden a big forbidden that means a, st a, a user who comes with this user a student user who comes with this role who doesn't have staff rooms access will not see this page at all and similarly to the office it will be the same and the principal room so what we have seen here is when we assign different roles for to a user we can restrict him to go to a particular page or resource or in other words let's say we can assign a user a role to give him access to a resource that we want and we can restrict him to access something that he has no permission or he has or he shouldn't have that permission so this is how we create this is not the fine granular permissions given to a user but this is like the basic how a key clock roles uh, plays uh, when we want to give permissions to a user and uh, want to decide what roles or what access rights he should have in an application so this is on the very high level how we can have an authorization as well as we also saw we had an authentication with key clock so this is the whole picture of the hi-fi school uh, hi-fi code school we uh, we can simply create more users over here and uh, try to give him different roles try to see how it functions with the application and basically you can play around with the access rights and the authentication part i will quickly create all the users over here and assign them uh, their respective roles like how I showed in the demo in the previous video and then uh, I'll come back to demo the same thing in order to analyze that we have achieved what we said in the previous video so as you can see here I have created more users into the key clock and for each user I have given them a different roles so for a li librarian I only gave him the library access and for a clerk I gave him office access so this two users should only be designated for this two purposes or this two resources and now we will quickly go through the demo with some of the users that we created here and uh, I'll start with the clerk user and try to go into the clerk or the office section and we'll see that what we get when we try to go to the other areas 
so I will quickly refresh this page. I'll click the Office tab and I'll log in with the Clerk user. And obviously I will get into the Office section and this is what we created the Clerk user for. And now if I want the Clerk user to go to Access Library, I will get Forbidden. And also in the other areas, I will get the same thing except for the home page and in the principal area also forbidden if i go out i'll log in with the principal which i also showed in my previous video with this user and in the principal or with the principal user i will have access throughout the resources that i have in this application so this is all the demo part that I wanted to share with you all today. And uh, with this, I would like to conclude today's video uh, by giving a short summary of what we did in the previous video as well as in this video. And uh, I hope that this video would be useful as this completes the whole scenario of how one can integrate a Spring Boot application with Key Clock and enable SSO login with it. So we all started with having uh, creating a client in our key clock and then we created a client with by giving it a client ID and uh, giving it as a con confidential client then setting up some URLs like the base URL of our application and right now we gave a valid redirect URIs to everything and I will surely come on this part in the later stage of this video series then we saw the client credential is very important for our whole uh, integration part. We created some roles for this application purpose. And uh, then we created some users that will have the access to our application or to the resources that we will have in future. Then we configured our Spring Boot app by giving the key clock configuration first and then the authorization configuration later and uh, then we show or we saw a demo how all this urls or all these endpoints were protected by a secure login with key clock i hope this would be helpful with the integration of sso login to your spring boot applications and if it was helpful uh, like the video uh, subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. So this would be the end of this video. I hope I'll see you in the next video. Till then stay blessed, stay safe and thank you all.